Good morning, everyone. We're going to talk today about how to open and run a successful restaurant. And if you've ever been in the restaurant business or ever worked in a restaurant, you know it ain't easy. And uh, that's what we want to talk about today because, well, uh, you know, it's, it's tough out there. It's not easy to uh, uh, to, to run a restaurant. So the context numbers are simple. Uh, not 90% of all restaurants that open will close within the first year of the 50 of the 10% left left 50% will close in the second year. There are uh, four types of restaurants. There's diners, walk through or drive through fast food, as most of you know, a buffet where you sit down and make your choices in a long line of other people. And of course, sit down or full service. The importance of the restaurant business is location, location, location. This is because you don't want any snow days. You don't want to be open and literally no one comes through the door. And, you know, you want to be close to a residential um, area, residential housing, whether that be in an urban setting downstairs, downtown with condos. You don't want a second floor restaurant. Not very successful. They've been uh, they've been tried, but they're not entirely successful. Street level is always the best for people to walk in that don't even know you. Uh, the other thing that you want to keep in mind, too, is always maintaining a captive audience, particularly in your own neighborhood with flyers and information that people can get, you know, takeout menus and uh, serving takeout is really important. That's how restaurants have survived in COVID. Um, After the location, the second important aspect of a new restaurant is the ambience. The height of the ceilings is important because the higher the ceilings are, the more noise that's created. And then you have to fill that space in with expensive things that hang like chandeliers or plants or something to fill the space and uh, break down the noise lighting of course is important uh people want to be able to see whether you have that at the table setting or from above and uh, seating is always important there's uh different types of seating chairs booths and tables and you always have an array of tables a table for two that can be you know folded or moved to be a table of four uh table of uh, eight or larger tables. Some some restaurants have sitting rooms that are separate because they're high end and full service. Um, it's um, it's interesting that uh, I've looked in the back in, in the past and what I've done, and I've never really wanted to have plants in a restaurant because there's so much maintenance involved. So you don't want them either. If you're going to put plants in, put fake ones in that look pretty good, and then from a distance you can't tell. And then uh, you always want to think about the colors that you have. Soft pastel colors are the rage. Um, you know, in the 70s and 80s, uh, uh, the prison industry discovered orange was the safest color to use. Variants of orange are good. Um, you don't want too uh, masculine of colors or, or too feminine of colors. So you, you have to find a mid-row and uh, pick the colors you like them. That tends to be the best thing. You want to pick clo- uh, furniture, of course, that make people comfortable uh, to sit down for about an hour. So not too comfortable. They sit there longer than you want because the importance in a restaurant, particularly a sit down full service, is the turnover. Uh, turnover meaning when do they get in and when do they get out? The operations, there's only two parts of operations to a restaurant. Uh, the front um, and uh, it's important there because cash is taken and you have always want to keep track of the cash as much as you can you'd be surprised how much ends up being taken from the till and uh, then there's the back the back end represents the uh, food production uh, liquor production if it's a bar uh, for bar service or uh, wine you know where you store your wine and uh, it's important too that you check and make sure that back door is locked because things can go out the back door just as easily as they can go out the front door Cost, of course, to profit is everything that everyone looks at. Um, the average food price per person is very relevant. In the fast food industry, it's 6 to 10. Uh, family restaurants, it's 15 to 20. And full-end service can be 35 to 75 or even up to $1,000, depending on the wine or the alcohol that's drank. Menu is a very important aspect of the restaurant business. The reason being is inventory. Food costs are the biggest cost after uh, labor, and then the third biggest cost is your rent or what, what you pay for the building that you're in. So you want to make sure that your menu includes everything that you want to serve, and make sure you limit it because um, the larger the menu, menu, 
uh, the more capital is required for inventory. So if you notice on menus next time you sit down, you'll find that 50% of the menu is few items, meaning there it's repetitive. Like 80% of the item might be use of a, a single product. Uh, as an example, there's a lot of ways to serve chicken and uh, steaks are big in the, in the restaurant industry. So uh, the key to steaks is never overcook them, always over undercook them because you can cook them more, but you can't uncook them. And uh, waste is important. So an example of waste would be serving prime rib that's rare nowadays because it's so expensive. But there is the benefit of beef dip if you have or serve um, lunch or to feed your staff, which most restaurants do, by the way. Um, dishes are an important aspect of the ambience in a sit-down full-service restaurant. Of course, if you go into a uh, fast food place, you'll find that you spend more on what you throw away than what you eat. It's rather remarkable, that bag that it's in, the napkins, the ketchup, um, the, the uh, fry, the paper bag to hold the fries, the paper wrap for the burger, um, the cap to the drink, the drink is the, the cup itself and a straw. You throw all that away and it literally costs more than what you're eating. So in a restaurant business, other than that, dishes are important, so is silverware. And uh, you have to have things they call condiments on the table. So you have to situate and make choices of condiments depending on the food you serve, you know, ketchup, uh, mustard, salt and pepper, uh, different seasonings hot seasonings, uh, uh, other choices of, of en enjoyment for your, uh, your uh, guests to en enjoy. But it's always important because you have to maintain these things and, and they have to be disposed of and cleared um, and cleaned constantly, particularly in the age of COVID. Um, inline service to full service is a big, big rarity to discuss uh, discriminate against depending on the type of restaurant you have because obviously takeout is in and out but you still may have a full service sit down restaurant and then of course the most important thing is staff I bring this up last because training 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 you have to know from your own experience what you're going to teach your staff and remember you compliment public in front of a staff and you sit down and criticize or correct in private uh best way to find good employees steal them go and <laughs> go and visit restaurants in your area or if you've already know your area and you, you've sought out the, where you're going to be uh if you within two blocks you can find an entire staff and uh, bribery works uh, there's great ways of being able to get people into your restaurant you offer them food uh, you give them certificates uh, to bring their guests or friends in for you know first three months and uh, you'll find that a good business plan, marketing plan, and a sales projection, uh, which covers all your costs and allow you to appreciate the benefit that you can gain. You can make a lot of business, a lot of money in the restaurant business, but you can lose far more than you make. So you always have to charge what you need to make money. Never be afraid to charge what you need. It's as simple as preparing a meal. And in that meal, there's a recipe. And literally, you have to sit down with everything you have on your menu and go through what you need to prepare that dish, right down to the spices that you put on every uh, item that you prepare. That's how extreme it is. That's the work that you have to put in. And that's your list of how to open a successful restaurant. <laughs> Well, we got some other things uh, to talk about, too, Shane. Uh, when you talk about location, for example, uh, one of the things you need to know uh, is the neighborhood and uh, what's the makeup of the neighborhood and your zip code. And you can find that at census.gov. Census.gov will give you the, make, uh, the makeup of any zip code, um, you know, how many, uh, how diverse it is. Uh, and that will help you as well. The other thing uh, we need to touch on for sure is the health department and city regulations, because you're going to have to adhere to um, in restaurants in California. I know they get an A, B, C, D rating that they have to post in their window. So uh, what can you tell us about health department and uh, working with cities and uh, signage, things like that? Well, in your business plan, you'll want to put together uh, the guidelines and all the rules that you're dealing with. 
Uh, the, most cities uh, will provide you all of that. And of course, as you're opening and preparing the restaurant, remember, uh, do not buy anything new. Uh, that's the worst kick in setting up a new restaurant is being, you know, thinking or being sold new equipment. There are way too many places that uh, go broke because of the equipment they buy at the beginning. You can find great, uh, practically, if not new uh, equipment, because 90% of the restaurants fail in the first year. So, uh, you know, go to auctions to buy everything. Everything you purchase, go to auctions. Um, even dishes, you, you know, you can you can go to uh, uh, estate sales and uh, find great dishes, great dish sets. You know, you, your dishes don't have to all match, but for the table, they should match. So, you know, there's all kinds of neat things. And, of course, your website. We talk, we talk about that all the time, and I just want to step on that for one moment because it's an understood fact. You'll set up a website for people to come in the 21st century and, and offer your takeout information and, and provide what's on your menu for people to make reservations or to call and make inquiries about. A wine list is a great draw for people because people in full-service restaurants, they want to improve impress people uh, big part of how easily can someone impress their guests with what they not only eat but they drink absolutely yeah well another thing we've got to talk about uh for sure is that uh i don't know if you realize this uh, shane um, um facebook won't pay you to make videos uh, twitter won't pay you to make videos linkedin won't pay you to make videos instagram won't pay you to make videos spotify won't but youtube will youtube will pay you to make videos just like this and if you'd like to know how we do it uh, we use Streamyard, and the uh, the uh, description and uh, link to that is in the uh, uh, below uh, plus, we've also got all the equipment we use to make these podcasts, so uh, you'll want to check those out as well. And if you're just joining us, of course, don't forget to subscribe. Ring the notification bell to like us. If you liked any of the tips that Shane has given today, uh, comment down below. Let us know what you, uh, what you think, and what are your tips uh, for a restaurant? What do you like when you go into a restaurant? What, what are the things that you're looking for besides just a good meal and a you know, and a, and a good dining experience, what what triggers do you say right off the bat, I like this place or I hate this place? So by all means, uh, check and all then, of those winner, things out. Another winner for you is uh, in the marketing side. Famous people like to be seen and they like to go to restaurants because they have the expendable income to do so. So it, my advice is uh, always be courteous and ask if you can take their picture. And if you do, uh, have a picture taken with the server that served them. And then put that on the wall. And in this age, you can do up a picture, print it in the back and bring it out, have them sign it. And I always have the same frame. Don't change the frame. I always have the same frame and have a wall of famous people. You don't have to put that up there. But, you know, pick a wall in your restaurant of the people that have eaten in your restaurant. It's a good draw and it's a good selling point because if people see who's eaten there and they recognize them, then they know this is a good place to eat. Yeah. And you'll also find more tips at TomAndShane.com. Small business video, videos, articles, and tips are over there. So uh, make sure that you uh, go over and check that out as well. So. All right, that's going to wrap it up for uh, this segment. And uh, by all means, uh, uh our YouTube channel. We've got tons of videos uh, on how to do all kinds of things in business. So check those out and uh, we will see you. Uh, well, we'll hear you on the radio this coming Saturday. <laughs> so all the info right. on that's in the description below. So until then, thanks, Shane. Thanks for everybody watching and listening. And uh, we'll see you down the road.